if I get a second. I'll second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second for a recommendation requesting that a speed study be done in this area. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries for we will be studying our If, if I might uh, continue. Brooke, I tell you, uh, the, the idea that we can't reduce the speed limit until people have stopped driving so fast is worrisome to me. Um, I know on 57th Street near where I live, uh, Friday night at 11 o'clock, motorcycles are going, you know, 80 miles an hour and uh, a 40 mile an hour zone, and they're only using one wheel. Uh, uh, please don't study that at that hour. Um, <laughs> We, we have to, you know, and I just know that people have been been killed on this highway over the past year, at least two or three, and a, a couple of real close runs for some others that were miraculously rescued. And uh, I, I think this whole road is going to be packed with more development until it's, uh, you know, a, a movie theater, a, a McDonald's, a pawn shop, a church, all the way up to Dell Rapids, and uh, I think we're better off reserving some land to widen the road or put those turn lanes in uh, soon. And those are all things that Scott Jansen and the Mitchell Region Office would look into. And certainly, numbers of accidents on a route can also trigger the Region Office to do a speed study. So it's not just you know, someone requests it, they're constantly monitoring the accident history on all state routes. To the, that can be, again, a factor to, to trigger that study to be conducted. Um, maybe just as a little bit of an example, uh, if you go west out of town on uh, Highway 42, as you go west from the TLS Road, there's the Cherry, Cherry. Cherry Lake Reserve, mm -hmm. yes. And right there at uh, the TLS intersection there, Pretty much as you go west, it's currently 65 miles an hour. And so there's been concerns just like this with the speed. And it's just now going through uh, commit the Transportation Commission to change at least the section of 42 that goes, that's on the south side of that development to go down to, I believe, 45. Oh, come on. <laughs> Actually, we just approved a daycare right across the opening of Cherry Lake Creek. Oh, no. we, we digress a bit. While we're 55 is fine. Um, <laughs> no, we digress a bit. But, but, but what I think we have, uh, Commissioner Barth, if I may, is, is since you are a county commissioner, so you might have more of an enforcement issue of the existing speed limit than you have it. So, so all too often, this country, and we can be editorial here, has laws. And when they aren't properly enforced, we think we've got to change the law. And what we really have is an enforcement issue. So, you know, uh, since the uh, sheriff uh, might have some influence there, or maybe we get some enforcement up in that area. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I think Sioux Falls is, and that's just a subset of the, the county in which we deal, but we have ridiculously slow speed limits because we get people that come in and say, we've got too much speed in this area, and it's an enforcement issue. It's not a published speed limit issue where you go to other communities and they've got more corridors at 40 and 45 through the city. I think that the, I'm gonna guess that your charge for the state is uh, transportation, moving people in a safe manner. Correct. And uh, when we slow down the movement of people to increase safety, I'd say that your first ought to look is are we enforcing our existing laws before you go and reduce speed limits? That would be my opinion. I think we probably digressed enough, would you say? Thank you. Let's go back to the matter at hand, which is this rezoning. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak to that item? Hearing uh, no one, I guess I'd, I'd like make a couple of comments on, uh, from a chair position before we get a motion on the floor. Go for it. I, if you don't mind. I, I, uh, I look at that commercial piece, and it's not even an access thing. To me, it's a spot zone. Um, the desire is for residential to the east, there's residential platted to the north, there's residential platted to the west, so on three sides, and I believe it's ag to the south. So why we would skip over a quarter of a mile, you know, and go into another commercial zoning, I, I wouldn't support it if, if no matter what, <coughs> with sewer hookups or whatever, I wouldn't do it myself. So having said that, I'd entertain a motion. It's difficult for me to 
to vote for approval on this, just because I say, like I said earlier, that's still no guarantee that we rezone as residential. Well, okay, so it's residential, but at what point, and this is you know, a question for you, Scott, does, as a part of the conditional use or whatever, because that no longer requires a conditional use then, right? That's correct. This needs a building permit. Full, that's correct, but they're going to have to bring in a preliminary plan for your review. And because it's it, it it exceeds the number of lots that we can approve administratively, so it would it would come back before you with the uh, the residential portion. They would have to submit a preliminary plan, which would outline the subdivision plan. And at that time, we would uh, look. At, we'd have a set of of street engineered street plans, a grading plan, and, and everything that goes along with that, and. Once you approve that preliminary plan, then they could uh, post surety or construct the roads and start selling off lots. And at that time, you know, it would be, uh, you know, you could put conditions on the preliminary plan that only, you know, the only could, they have to hook up to the San uh, Renner Sanitary Sewer District. And then when uh, they would bring in a plat, uh, of uh, let's say lot one of, of block one or whatever, uh, you, I, we could say, do you have the documentation from Renner Sanitary Sewer District that you could service this before, we, before I would sign off on it? Because that would have been a condition of, of the preliminary plan that the final plat, any final plat has to hook up to the Renner Sanitary Sewer District. So you could, you know. That's one step away, right? Yes. But I think as far as the zoning is appropriate, I agree with, absolutely agree with Chairman Steinar. This is spot zone. Because it is a quarter mile and it's residential all around it. That's what it is. Well, it would go residential ag and then commercial. Yes. I mean, it, it, that's what it is. Right. Um, something. But I could support just being residential as long as we get another shot at the sewers things. But there will be no residences unless it's hooked up to the sanitary sewer district. But we can't say that this time. No, right. not no, not this time. This is just zone. So I can support the rezoning to residential. I'm not in disagreement, but I wonder uh, at, at some point it would not surprise me in any way that this is all commercial. Uh, you know, it might be 20 years from now, it might be five years from now. The way uh, the, the region is growing and pe the demand for, uh, you know, I don't see us moving a, a, another Walmart to this location, but. Uh, well, if that's all south, I mean, if that whole southeast corner of town is wide open. Right, but as you can see, there's even increasing demand here on the north. And, uh, anyway, I just uh, I can see it changing at some point. But I think uh, you're probably right that uh, uh, sort of leaping uh, leaping over the the next uh, quarter mile is probably not what we should do. Did I hear a motion? Well, Mr. Chairman, I I would like to split, like you're suggesting earlier, okay. um, and have two motions. And I think it would be cleaner. They can appeal one at a time, or whatever, than a decision, whatever. And I, you know, Could you deny the commercial. Deny the commercial, and then as one motion, a separate motion, approve the resident. But I'll, I'll make the first motion. But I mean, that would be my suggestion that we do handle them as two separate motions. So uh, procedurally then, when you, uh, or there's, before you get there then, so the, uh, yeah. you'd be recommending rezoning for uh, R1 for the portion that's requested R1, and the portion that has been requested C would remain A. That's the tricky part, yeah. You know, the other option is, the problem is, if you deny my, my both, then it goes back to your original question. Right? I think if it's a single motion, though, if you denied both as a combined deal, yeah. and then had a follow-up motion to, to rezone the uh, R1 section to R1, it's a, separate, it's a different action. I mean, I'm kind of looking to staff to see if they're... Well, 
and we don't have our attorney here tonight. Yeah, I think we're getting a little bit of the yeah. legalese of this, That's but right. you know, it it was advertised. We we did advertise a rezoning for the entire parcel. A portion of it was going to be C commercial, and a portion of it was going to be R one. That was the request that was advertised. So. I think you're totally within your, your. I think I think it's appropriate if you'd like to rezone, make a recommendation to rezone the entire thing to R1. You, you are within your your rights to do that. Or if you want to deny it and have them come back and uh, and we send out another. I, that's the other option. Is you what we would in Rapid City we would call this uh, deny it without prejudice, which would allow them to. We, to resubmit a new development plan at no cost. You like doing stuff at no cost. I know it. I, <laughs> you, guys are low, you guys are low cost. Over these. <laughs> yeah, okay. they, they denied lots of stuff without prejudice, which would allow the applicant to bring back um, a plan, a revised plan, and we'd have to go through the whole rehearing notice. But it's up to, I mean, that's going to put them back. Well, even at that, the, the denial goes to the commission. Right. It would go to the, the denial request. It, there'll be a hearing before the county commission. Yep. And this is only a recommendation. So, so you know, if you wanted, uh, it, and maybe. You gotta make a motion. No, go ahead. I would move for approval that it be zoned strictly R1. The parcels, the whole thing. Then do you say I deny it and deny the commercial portion of it? Well, you wouldn't have to then, probably, if you do it that way. Do it that way. It, at least it, get, it, it sends the signal to the county commission that takes the final action. Right. All right. Yeah. We're just a recommending right. body at this point. It should be residential only. So that's a. Did I hear a motion that uh, to make it all residential and uh, no commercial in this request? So there a second? That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, and that motion carries, which will be to, rezone, to recommend rezoning to R1 residential for the entire parcel, okay. no commercial. And I think that takes us to the end of the regular agenda. Is there any uh, old business, Scott? No, not that I know of. New business? No. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Um, start the uh, county portion of the meeting. I'll begin with a few introductory comments. As a courtesy, as I said, if you've got cell phones, please make sure you've got those turned off. Any final action taken on a conditional use permit or request will take effect the five working days following the meeting unless a written appeal to the planning commission's uh, decision is filed to the planning office by Monday, August 4th at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission for a hearing on Tuesday, August 19th at 9.15, and meetings for the County Commission are held in this same room. Any final action taken on a rezoning and text amendment request tonight will be referred to the County Commission for a public hearing, and that's on Tuesday, August 26th at 9.15, and again, that will be in this room. At this time, the Planning Commission will consider the consent agenda. The minutes from the June 23rd meeting are included as part of the consent agenda. Are there any objections from the Planning Commission to any item listed on the consent agenda? Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I'm just wondering about item number uh, three, which uh, had to do, you know, we had another item uh, related to that in a sense because of the sanitary sewer in that area. Mm -hmm. I just uh, maybe would ask a question of staff when we get to that about that. Uh, so well, it's on the consent agenda. Uh, if it's, you want to move it to the regular agenda? Yeah. Okay. All right. That one is moved. Any other items? Next, I'm going to read each of the items on the consent agenda. If there's any member of the audience that objects to an item on the uh, consent agenda, please raise your hand and the item will be moved to the regular agenda for the commission to address later in the meeting. So the uh, first one, as we mentioned, is the approval of the minutes. Item number two is a conditional use permit 14-35 to exceed 1,200 square feet total accessory building area. And they're requesting 
5,616 square feet on property located at 26461 484th Avenue. That's approximately three miles southeast of Brandon. Anyone? Item number three, we're going to move to the regular agenda. Item number four is a conditional use permit, 14-36, to transfer a building eligibility from the northeast corner. Uh, rather than reading the legal, I'll give you the, uh, the location. It's approximately 2.5 miles northwest of Crooks. Is there anyone here for that item? Objections? Uh, item number five is a zoning ordinance. Uh, it's a text amendment, 14-03, uh, to amend the article 19-03 uh, of the 1990 revised zoning ordinance for Minnehaha County. And basically, this is to add a conditional use permit criteria to aid the Planning Commission in their uh, review of conditional use permit applications. Anyone here for that item? Item number six, then, is a conditional use permit 14-37 to exceed 1,200 square feet of total accessory building area, and they're requesting 1928. Um, and that's on property located at 25656 472nd Avenue, approximately two miles east of Crooks. Okay. Item number seven is a conditional use permit, 14-38, to allow a single family dwelling on the property uh, which is located approximately one half mile northeast of Humboldt. Anyone here for that item? Do you want to have that moved to the regular agenda, sir? Yes. Okay. Item number seven. So uh, what I have then, staff, is that what we have on the consent agenda are items 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Is that correct? 7, 8, 9, yeah. Yeah, do 8, oh. 9, yeah. The second page. They stick together. <laughs> How about number 8, then? Um, uh, conditional use permit 14-39 to transfer one building eligibility. Uh, and that's uh, located approximately a half a mile south of Hartford. And number nine, the conditional use permit 14-40 uh, to exceed 1,200 square feet for the total accessory building and they're requesting 2,730 feet. That's located at uh, 24966 465th Avenue, approximately two and a half miles southeast of Colton. Okay, we'll try that again. The consent agenda then would consist of items one, two, four, five, six, eight, and nine. Unless there's another page I missed you yet. Gentlemen, any objections to uh, those items? And would there be a motion to approve that consent agenda? There is. Second. Motion and second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. So if you're here for those items, your item has been approved and you're uh, free to leave at this time. Those are items one, two, four, five, six, eight, and nine. Then the regular agenda is going to consist of items 3, 7, and 10. Is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? So we'll move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. All right. We're off and running on item number 3. And Scott, do you have that one? Yeah. Okay, uh, item number three is a rezoning request, uh, 1406, to rezone property approximately six acres from RC Recreation Conservation to C Commercial. The property is generally located at what we would call the Renner Corner on the south side, it's shown in red on the map in front of you. Uh, the I did take a I had a chance to go out and do a uh, in site inspection. And as most of you are aware, there is some general or some commercial already existing in that area, and I'll have some pictures of it. The property is located at the intersection of County Highway 130, which is commonly called the Renner Road, and South Dakota Highway 115, which runs between Sioux Falls and uh, Del Rapids. Uh, the comprehensive plan recognizes that there will be continued growth in the Sioux Falls area and that this growth will uh, exert strong influences on land uses. Staff believes that the subject property is influenced by growth that's occurring in Sioux Falls, and the, the rezoning proposal meets the policies and objectives of the comprehensive plan. 
The site is located along a major South Dakota and county highway, and the proposed rezoning site has a, has a convenient siting for future commercial development. There are, the site uh, builds onto an existing commercial established area known as the Renner Corner. This area is fairly well known throughout the county. Staff supports the rezoning request as it meets the criteria and the de development concepts of the comprehensive plan. Uh, that being said, I'll show you some, some general pictures of the area. This is on the south edge of the property, looking directly north. Right now, it's uh, in a cornfield. Uh, this is looking uh, back. This is looking to sort of to the south. You can see this is once again looking at the south. It looks at, uh, you can see right in front of you is the Renner Road, which is the county highway. Off to the um, left is the state highway. This is Renner Corner, the established commercial area that I uh, had indicated, as well as the, the gas station convenience store, and then further north is the location of a, what I would call a small strip mall. There's the safari bar, and there's uh, some offices in there as well. Uh, as I indicated, we're recommending approval as it builds on an, an existing commercial, established commercial zone, and it fits the criteria of the comprehensive plan. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Any questions for Stan? Yeah. Scott, uh, it looks to be uh, a little bit lower than the property to the north or even to the road that you're standing on. Um, is the applicant going to need to build that up in order to keep it above water? Well, I can show you generally, um, if, if you, uh, the floodplain uh, runs Generally, this it's all out of the floodplain. The, the existing floodplain, this is Silver Creek right through here, and the, the edge of that floodplain sort of dissects this lot in this manner right through here. So this portion over here is in the floodplain. This portion at going north and, and east is out of the floodplain. So, you know, they may want to... I, I would suppose there may be some fill that's put in there, but it wouldn't be required. It's out of the floodplain. It is a little bit lower if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, um, and this may be a little bit deceiving because the highway right-of-ways are built up. It's, it's generally level with the rest of the property. It's just that the, the highway right-of-ways have been built up a little bit for drainage and, and uh, uh, maybe set better sight distances on the top of the road. Just didn't want it to be underwater. It's out of the floodplain. And I guess if I might uh, follow up. So, you know, it's been uh, brought up on the, in the other, uh, in the Sadat's application about the uh, sanitary sewer. Is there sufficient capacity in the sanitary sewer for this location, but not the other one? Uh, I, I, I think that there's, a, um, it's my understanding after talking to the Renner Sanitary Sewer District that they have capacity for, uh, they have a limited capacity, but there's capacity there. How they dole out that capacity, that is an administrative de uh, decision that the Renner Sanitary Sewer District makes, but they have additional capacity. They've recalculated the lift stations and uh, it's my understanding there's more capacity, but uh, that might be something you could ask. The, the property owners may have more information on that Super. than I do. In the long run, we may need more capacity one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Stan? Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Is the applicant here, and can you come forward, state your name and address, and uh, tell us what you're doing? My name is Richard Sorum, one of the owners. Uh, Speaking from my brother Dean Sorum and my sister Linda Clarkson. My address, did you want? Yeah, what's your address? Uh, 25787 Lindale Road, C L Y N Renner. Do you have anything you want to add to the staff report or any comments you'd like to make? Um, I don't know if this was important at this time, but the, I had the I had my surveyor person take a look at the floodplain, and it really is even lesser than what Scott said. But 
it was for a time, I think they did that through Paul's here too, but for a time it was getting clear over, uh, in my case, the north. And then we got that, we had to send down the money, you know, and get this all handled, but it come back to where it originally was. And it's just an area that's just a little spot there. That's one thing. The I haven't talked with Judy at the sewer recently, but <clears throat> I have a letter at home that said that, I uh, can't tell you the date of it, but at that time there was 42 hookups remaining. And then like Scott said, they're still working on, if the, if the sewage goes to Sioux Falls, so there's some people involved here, but, uh, um, and they've done study, they've, they've been working at this to get more and more. I don't, I can't answer specifically. That's where. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, um, at Chair. this time, it probably isn't. Uh, okay. there's any other questions? I guess the only other question I would have is, I assume you're going to access it off of, uh, the county road and not off the state highway, right? No, that's not quite right. Oh, the, you're um, come off the state let's see, where Scott was taking that picture, he's in charge of the Me. <laughs> okay. Or, uh, right. Uh, oh, where the car is? Or, or, yes, is yeah, right. Gotcha. On this side of the bean, uh, bean field, there is a, there, there, there's a 30 foot easement there now, right away, but it's on that hump. Well, there it is, clear down to the end. Yeah. That's the way that we had spoken to. Brooke, to help me a little bit, Scott. Yeah. Brooke and then uh, forget the, the, the regular state man, and he said we can have one there, but there's also, I don't know if you saw that car on that other one. Um, yep, oops, I'm on the wrong way. Sorry. That's fine. See where this car sits there? Yeah. It appears that there's a driveway coming there. Yep. He says, so you can't put one there. So we'll have one there, and there'll also be one from the county farther back from the intersection. It's a good idea. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to uh, comment on this item? All right. Yes, like please come forward. State your name and address. <coughs> My name is Craig. Last name J-U-C-H-T. Address is 25833. 475th Avenue, Renner. Uh, my question is just for clarification. Are we talking about access, I think I understood it, access from 115 and from the county road? And then I want to clarify where is the 115 access because uh, he just indicated that it was not to be at the, at the place where the car was sitting. So I, maybe if I could just speak from here. If you look, you see there's a road there on the south side that says Monarch Lane. Yep. So they, they already, that lot, that parcel of property already has access off an existing road, so that, which comes off of Highway 115. Right, correct. So they could use that. They're also, uh, if you look at the, they also have an, uh, an existing right-of-way that's off of the Renner Road, the county highway, uh, and it's at the, the west end of the, of the four little lots. Okay. At this point in time, I'd like to point out that the, the, there's residential people that live on Monarch Lane. So you're going to be accessing the property on Monarch Lane, which is at the south end of this description, which is also, at this point in time, is just residential at this point. Um, just as a something for, for the individuals to understand. So. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yeah. So that approach that's there right now, they can't use? Well, it would be up to the, they would need to apply to that the state. It would be a change, it's that's a right. change in use. So they would... Oh, from field, ag. That's right. Right now it's an ag, it's a field approach into an ag field. If, if they want to put a different approach in there, uh, they would have to contact, work with DOT or the county highway department, one of the two, to put a different approach in there, and then they would use that those various highway departments, the state highway or, or, or county highway, would look at the criteria for the speed, the, it close, the how close it is to the intersections and all those, and decide whether they would grant uh, any additional approaches or not. Okay, because uh, at this point in time, uh, I actually live just to the south, the place that is just to the south 
uh, west of that, that corner. Uh, traffic on 115 is moving very briskly mm -hmm. by the time they get to this area. And uh, my concern here is that uh, individuals will be attempting to make left-hand turns into the property, so I was concerned as to where that, that approach might be met at this point in time. So. Sir, if I might. You know, having living there, uh, you must have noticed, uh, it seems to me anyway, anecdotally, that there have been a lot more accidents in the last year, um, you know, further up as well, up towards Baltic and stuff, but uh, speed and uh, stuff sure seems to be an issue. Speed is always a concern on the road um, there. Um, I have a sister who was in an accident, uh, of course it's uh, 35 years ago, but uh, my father lives, on, or I live next to my father, which is just off the bottom of that map, and uh, when she was, they were hit, uh, rear-ended from a driver that uh, was, at that point in time, was speeding down the road. So yes, concern, I do have concern about the, the speed, and then the individuals that would be attempting to access this property, as said, so I was concerned as to the, the access. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. I, I will let the commission know that Brooke White from South Dakota Department of Transportation is here in the audience. Uh, so if you have any specific questions on how the state would come to, uh, you know, uh, allow or permit any different kinds of approaches, um, she may be willing to answer those for you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to hear, because I had a question. Uh, to me, it seems like if we're going to allow this to be zoned commercial, we shouldn't allow it to dump on a current residential street. Good evening, I'm Brooke White. I am the Access Management Engineer for Eastern South Dakota for the Department of Transportation. You want my address? No, you don't need to. Okay, <laughs> okay so the question here is about access, and we have already spoken with um, I apologize, I've forgotten your name. This is Ron. Ron. Um, the gentleman who is planning to develop this site came and met with myself and Brian Van Dam, one of our technicians out at the DOT, to discuss access to the site. When someone comes in and applies, we, have, we request that they supply us with some type of um, site plan so that we understand what their plan use is for the site. Uh, when we decide on access, we also have several criteria that we have to go by. This section of highway is classified as a rural section, which basically allows us to grant no more than five accesses per side per mile. So in a one mile section, you have five accesses on the one side and five on the other. So 10 total within that one mile section. This area already has met its limits um, for access. Thus, uh, the field approach that you saw in the photos is one that we would not allow. Um, the other criteria that comes into play here is anytime you have, I'll call it a corner lot, meaning that it has some other access besides the state highway system, that, that roadway takes precedence over the state highway for, for access reasons. So for for our, from our perspective, this site has access from the street on the south end and the, the um, existing right-of-way on the west side of the property. They may not be developed, but the right-of-way is there, and so um, it's up to the developer then to invest the money to develop those right-of-ways if they aren't already developed. Is there any other questions I can answer? I have one just for educational purposes. Um, yes. Brooke, I think I understood you to say that you view this as a, uh, or classify it as a rural highway. Is Correct. Right? How many classifications do you have? Uh, rural, non-rural, is there some? Um, you know, I have my, my criteria with me, but I, I'm fairly certain in saying that we have six classifications, okay. and every mile of state highway throughout the entire state has a, a specific classification based on the development in that area. I see. So a roadway can have one classification in this mile, and the next mile it might be something different because it's more developed, let's say, than the, the previous mile. Okay. Transitional or some sort. Right. Okay. Sure, yes. <coughs> Mr. Chair? Yes. 
You know, man, uh, this is really a rapidly developing area, and the traffic is really quite incredible at times up there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I used to have to pull onto Highway 11 on the southeast part of the uh, uh, the city of Sioux Falls, and it, it always seemed like there was a Merlin Roy dump truck right on my tail uh, at 70 miles an hour within seconds. Uh, and it, you know, at what point do we start to control the speed limits a little bit more or widen the road? If this was a four-lane road all the way to Del Rapids, uh, it would get plenty of use, I'm sure. I'm sure that is probably a good general thought for this area. I will tell you that four-lane highways typically are more accident-prone than one that's, say, three lanes um, because uh, people will stop to make a turn and then you end up with rear-end accidents. Oftentimes we're actually looking at what's called a roadway diet, where we're converting a four-lane section down to three because a center turn lane is actually safer than having a four-lane section. But in terms of speed, um, since you brought that up, you know, we can't just go out and change the signs. It's all regulated by the South Dakota Transportation Commission. And what happens is anyone, any, any resident, citizen of the state, can request that a, a speed study be conducted on a section of roadway. So in this case, um, we, this parcel exists in uh, the Mitchell region, and so there's a Mitchell region traffic engineer uh, who would go out and study this area, this section of highway, and they look at what is the 85th percentile. So what are 85% of the traveling public what is their driving speed? They figure that out and then they present that to the commission. And if it's, you know, if, if they're meeting the 85th percentile right now, they're obviously not going to go out and change the speed limits. But if the traffic is such that people can't travel, they're so, you know, it's so congested, they can't meet that posted speed limit, and so it actually is lower than what's posted, again, they present that to the commission. The commission then has to approve it, and then they send the maintenance forces out to actually physically change the signs. Um, in terms of, you also kind of talk, we talk generally about turn lanes and things, and we have some criteria when folks come in to develop a site that, based on the size of their, their, their development, like say the square footage, the planned use, the employment, plan, you know, the employment numbers that they have planned for the site, there is a point where we actually require that the developer do what's called a traffic impact study, where they have to hire a licensed professional engineer who practices in the state of South Dakota to go out there and study the area and figure out how is this development going to affect the adjacent highway system. And so they write a lengthy report that tells us exactly what, I shouldn't say exactly, but their best guesstimate of what, what's going to happen to the highway based on this new development. And then the, the end of the report gives us recommended mitigation techniques to um, mitigate those traffic impacts that the site is, is going to be creating, which could be installation of turn lanes, traffic signals. Those are some examples. And so then we put those mitigation techniques back on the landowner who's actually producing the issue. So they are required then to pay for the installation of that turn lane, traffic signal, etc. In this case, what's been presented to us thus far doesn't meet the criteria for a traffic impact study to be required, but certainly um, what's been presented to us thus far isn't a full build-out of the site. And so if later what they're proposing meets those criteria, we certainly would require um, a traffic impact study at that point in time. Thank you. You're welcome. Very helpful. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak to this item? Commissioner Nathan. Yeah, I'll move approval of the rezoning. Yes, I will, I will second that and I'll also say that as far as the zoning aspect of it, that's fine, but there's conditional use permits that go before it's sort of all said and done, correct? It did, uh, did <coughs> potentially, yes. I mean, there are very limited uh, permitted so uses. Access, parking, yeah. Stuff so typically what we would do is a conditional use permit will come before us and then we will have a, a look at the parking, the, the any landscaping, the buffering, access points, signage, lighting. Mr. Chairman, I, I'm supportive of the motion, but I would like to ask another question, I guess. Go ahead. 
Scott, uh, you know, there are five lots on this, right? The four long ones and the one fat one. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we're put, uh, about to allow a commercial operation to, or that will be zoned commercial, and there's one party that's going to put something there. Are they going to use that whole area, or is this going to be, you know, are they going to have five different? It's my understanding they're only going to potentially use the, the northern portion of it at this point, the, the part that's closest to uh, the Renner Corner. Okay. The planet as such, there could be five different positions yeah. there. There could be many more than five. True. Okay. I mean, you could put a strip mall in there, and uh, you could have many businesses. Right. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to uh, approve the rezoning request. Is there any further conversation, discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. Those same sign, the motion carries. <coughs> We're on to item number seven. David Heinold with the Planning Department. Item number seven, conditional use permit 14-38 is to allow single family dwelling. This is approximately a, a half mile northeast of Humboldt, as you can see right here. This request is actually to specify the location of one building eligibility in the northwest quarter in this section right here. You can see that this is in section 10 of Humboldt Township. This is just to allow the development of a residence. The existing building eligibility on this parcel requires a conditional use permit approval prior to the allowance of a building permit for a new single family dwelling. On July 3rd, 2014, staff met Mr. Grace, who is the applicant, and determined that the proposed location for, this is the area right along 257th Street, which would be the proposed location for the single family dwelling. There is an existing farmstead right here. There are no confined animal feed feeding operations in the vicinity. There is one off to the west, a little a ways in the next section. Um, but the, the proposed location for the single family dwelling is consistent with the 1998 Comprehensive Development, development Plan, and there are Two existing farmsteads, one of which one of which I already mentioned. There is another one just about a quarter mile to the east of the proposed location for the residence. Um, the petitioner will utilize an existing driveway, which will be a shared driveway with this farmstead to the south. Um, basically, there, there's a couple criteria that we use in determining the um, adequacy, just of all conditional use permits, and for transfer building eligibilities and to allow single family dwellings. That the effect of, upon the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for, for the use is already permitted, and upon property values in the immediate vicinity. Um, this just makes, mentions that a right to farm notice covenant should be required to notify potential buyers of the realities of located in an agricultural area that they may be subject to certain sights, smells, and sounds. Um, number two, that the, the effect upon normal and orderly de development and improvement of the surrounding vacant property for use is predominant in the area. Um, the, the placement of the single family residence would increase the number of dwelling units allowed in this section. However, a greater number of dwellings can be expected in areas um, due to the existence of previously described parcels, um, such as some of the, these farmsteads just to the south. And there's a couple of them in that section. If I go back to the map here, these properties are known, of lo known as lots of record, and each parcel qualifies as a building site under the zoning regulations, which may increase residential densities in some areas, as outlined in the 1998 Comprehensive Development Plan. There are seven houses located in the section outside the incorporated area of Humboldt, which there are a couple that, um, some of the houses extend north along Ford Street right there in the town of Humboldt. And 10 building eligibilities or possibilities for more residences remain in this section. The applicant plans to utilize a septic system and, and rural water connection. Access will be provided, as I mentioned, off the existing driveway to the farmstead to the south. The staff believes that a drainage plan would be necessary to ensure that the proper flow of drainage is maintained along to 57th Street and from, with the addition of that new rooftop. 
which would undoubtedly increase the amount of surface runoff from the property. Um, and off street parking requirements will be provided for once the once a single family residence is constructed on the property. Um, there shouldn't be any um, cause for odor, fumes, dust, noise, vibrations, or lighting in any amounts that would otherwise constitute a nuisance. So staff finds that the transfer of building eligibility request to allow single family dwelling is consistent with density zoning in the 1998 comprehensive development plan. So staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 14-38 with the following conditions. That the lots shall be platted and a right to farm notice covenant shall be placed on the deed prior to the issuance of the building permit. And number two, that a drainage plan shall be submitted to the planning director for review prior to the approval of a building permit to construct a single family dwelling. And if you have any questions, thank you. Any questions for Thank you. Is the applicant here and can you come forward? And <clears throat> tell us about your... Good evening. Uh, Mike Grace, 25744, 463rd Avenue, Hartford. I guess, I just think it's a good place to put a house. There's five rows of trees on three sides of it, so... And there's no trees on the road, on the gravel road on that side, so... I don't know where else you put it. You know, the rest of it's farm ground, and I just need farming, I guess. So, so is this for yourself or no, yourself? Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else here that would like to speak to this item? Yes, sir. Please come forward. State your name and address. <coughs> Uh, my name is Tom Halls. I live at 45859 257th Street, Humble. Uh, I understand that he says that there, there's a cattle shed and a real original uh, farm site there. It's got uh, hog and chicken facilities and that stuff. And they're saying that there couldn't be an older problem with this. Uh, I. I can see that there could be potentially. I don't know what the building site's going to do, uh, if it's been sold again or what's happened. But, uh, and there is a problem with some drainage here uh, on the end of the driveway, and it goes, my dad and I farm just to the west side of the trees. So, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that we can do about it or not. But there, and there's 64 acres of pasture back in there. You know, they, if you're going to have livestock, there's a potential for. You know, on the original place itself. I realize there's five rows of trees, and we got enough acreages in our area right now. Enough small acreages along that road. I really don't care to have any more. I mean, if he's trying to transfer to a cross road from his house in Hartford, no problem. He can put four across the road right from his house. I don't, you know, that's all I got to say. I don't know if I can do anything about it or not. Thank you for your time. Anyone else here that would like to speak to the same? <coughs> David or Scott, would maybe be helpful to, uh, ex would you mind maybe explaining what the uh, right to farm covenant is and what action we're really taking here in because of the, that we're specifying the location in a little bit more? Well, I can explain to you what a right to farm covenant is. It, it's a document that we require uh, to be filed on all new residences constructed within the county uh, before we issue a building permit. It, uh, it puts a notice on the deed that when the house was created that the owners of the house acknowledge that there is a potential for li uh, agricultural activities and what those activities may entail and uh, that is done in order to make people aware that they're living in the country, uh, that there's potential for odors and smells and noises and bugs, whatever. Um, the, this is a little bit, un, uh, there are certain areas um, that 
did when the when we did the density zoning, there were a, a number of, of eligibilities that were identified that needed to have a conditional use permit before they could be placed uh, uh, as a single family residence, and this is one of those. So they are obligated to come before you to um, basically transfer that eligibility and show us, you know, the and get permission to build a single family residence on that property. And, and uh, maybe I'm mistaken, but we are not really creating an eligibility. We're deciding really that where that eligibility is, is going to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to occur. It's just now that we're specifying the location in, that, in an attempt to try and uh, protect the farming activities in that area to some extent. That's correct. We're um, ensuring that the people that would use that lot are then acknowledging that farming activities are going to surround them. It doesn't prevent them from, from objecting later to ag use, but it at least puts them on notice. That's correct. Right? Okay. That's correct. Yeah. And, 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 uh, as a comment, I mean, all we're doing is allowing the single-family dwelling where the, the person's concerns about, oh, there, there might be old buildings there that could have livestock to do any of that stuff, they'd have to come before us again. All, the, all this action is doing is allowing the single-family dwelling. Mm -hmm. You know, we aren't allowing any livestock in the, you know, unless they're going to hold livestock in their house, but I don't, you know. Can I speak again? Yes, please. You know, the old farm place is behind it, but that won't be part of this five acres. I understand. I mean, separate that guy wants to have cows or whatever, but the 60 acres of pasture, you know, there's 43 acres of pasture. Mm -hmm. That's not part of any of this. That's mine. That I'll be farming myself. So. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. <coughs> Anyone else from the audience want to speak to this item? Okay, commissioners. Mr. Yes, hit it. Uh, I'll move for approval. The one thing that, that oftentimes we tend to overlook is the drainage plan, and that is required to be as part of this. So that, therefore, I'll move for approval with conditions. Second. A motion and a second to approve with conditions permitted by staff. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All the same sign. Motion carries. All right. Um, we're off to number 10. Item number 10. Sorry. Item number 10. Scott Anderson again, representing the County Planning Department. Uh, this is re a, a hearing, a continuation of a hearing on rezoning 14-5. This is to rezone property from A1 Agriculture to R1 Residential and C Commercial on property that's located about a half mile north of uh, the Renner Corner off of Highway, uh, South Dakota Highway 115. Uh, you may recall that we had some very good discussion at our last meeting in June. This was continued in order to allow the applicant to have some time to address the to get some information on sanitary sewer hookups with the Renner Sanitary Sewer District and to perhaps discuss with DOT uh, the safety of, of uh, using the approach on the south. And uh, I have had a chance. Uh, I did work with right away at that after the meeting, I called Eric Willitson, the uh, engineer on behalf that is representing this on behalf of the petitioner, and we discussed uh, him contacting Renner Sanitary Sewer District and trying to get something from them in writing that they, whether they do or do not have any future hookups. And so he probably has information that he's going to give you that tonight. Uh, then I also took the step of asking uh, Brooke White, which you heard from earlier tonight, to show up tonight so we could discuss uh, traffic speeds, turning lanes, uh, anything you'd want to discuss on this portion of South Dakota Highway 115. And uh, as, as it happened, we had another rezoning request that came in, and so it just sort of worked well together that we can discuss sort of several rezoning requests uh, at this meeting. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Uh, nothing's really, uh, my recommendation has not changed. Uh, staff's recommendation is to move forward with the portion that's uh, proposed to be rezoned to R1 residential. 
we do not support, or staff does not support the portion, rezoning the portion to the C commercial uh, feeling. It does not quite meet the intent of the comprehensive plan and uh, isn't really building upon uh, an existing commercial area and maybe it's a little bit further out, uh, located outside of that boundary area or that corridor area that we'd like to see uh, at the intersection of two paved highways. So I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, I think Eric Willison is here. I think I saw him come in. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. He's the post. Oh, okay. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Eric's here, so. But. Scott, I kind of have a hypothetical question, I guess, for you, and, and that is, is um, should the uh, applicant through discussion tonight or in the future uh, wanted to revise, let's say that the commission was uh, uh, in alignment with you uh, for sake of discussion uh, that the commercial portion is not reason, you know, zoned from ag to commercial. And the uh, applicant would say, well, it, 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 as a fallback, I'd like to have both parcels, uh, rural residential, would you be supportive of that? I would be. Yeah, I, I was guessing as such, but I want to make sure. Okay. Other questions, uh, Scott? Yes, that's true. Scott, so what else would you uh, think that, you know, residential, you know, with five driveways out onto the highway or? No, I wouldn't want to see any more driveways out on the highway. Um, and the, if you look at the development plan, the, the, the yep. way they propose the development plan, there would be no additional driveways because there is an existing uh, yep. an approach there which they could utilize and develop into a roadway. Uh, I, in, in all fairness, I will tell you that I, I did meet with the property owners after the meeting as well, in addition to, to talking to, to Eric on the phone. And, you know, it, this, is, it, this is a tough situation. A tough, it, it poses a, an interesting paradigm for planning and zoning because I agree with, with the, the applicant or the property owners that it's, it isn't really the best place to build houses right on the highway because of the traffic, the noise, the safety, it's a tough spot to develop. But, you know, we, we as, a, as a planning department and as a planning uh, commission and ultimately county commission, we have to, we're gonna have to decide how we wanna develop this property if it's suitable for development at all. It is very tough to, to develop property right along a busy highway. It, it just is because you don't wanna put in very expensive homes. There's a safety issue, but you know, uh, nonetheless, a request has come before us, and we're going to have to make a decision eventually on it. Mr. Chair. Yes. So, Scott, would you recommend leaving that zoned ag then? No. My recommendation was uh, my recommendation to the property owner was that they look at potentially revising this plan, rezoning it all to uh, to. R1 residential and maybe uh, this row of lots right here splitting those long ways like this making three large rectangular lots or f and having uh, having them as building sites where you would have your house built here here and up here and then you'd have basically long lots that would go out to the highway there they have the benefit of having a nice row of, of established trees here. So you could have a nice home site here and still be somewhat buffered from, from the highway. And, you know, economically, I had, I had encouraged them to talk to a realtor because to sort of gauge what a maybe more of a, an estate lot would sell for as opposed to a one acre lot. And I don't know if, the, if they've had a chance, but that was my suggestion, my recommendation to the property owners was that they look at, is there a demand for maybe some a larger lot that you could sell as a premium lot with a beautiful wooded buffer strip between the highway? So, okay, so we're gonna hear from the sewer guy tonight. Uh, I think Eric has information from the okay. sewer district. Without a sewer, sanitary sewer district approval, I cannot support this. It's that simple. And I think that was my indication in the in the staff report. And two is that it is in the transition area. It is within the the, the Renner Sanitary Sewer District. Hence, I'm hoping you know, uh, as we heard tonight from the Sorums, there's forty some hookups out there. 
how they how the sanitary sewer district doles those out. Uh, I, I I couldn't tell you, but there I think there is capacity there. That is my understanding. The zoning to the north, Scott, is uh, ag, except for there are there are four lots planted there. Is that correct? There's actually more lots than that. There's another. There's a, 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 there's four lots here, and then there's a small road, and there's four lots. I think on the other side of that. The majority, the majority of the adjacent property that, that if you go on that northern boundary line or the property line is the majority is, is ag, uh, but four lots, right? That's correct. Okay. So the residential is going along the highway, not going quite as far <coughs> in this area. I think that's a that's the current development yes. pattern. Yeah. I mean that. Let me, let me rephrase that. That was the development pattern, probably from t 20 years ago. Right. Uh, sure. I don't think it's. It, to be honest with you, the, I don't believe that these lots are even developable. I think they're too small. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they they meet the the market for what the need is today for lots. Yeah. So uh, those are are th those are going to be if they're ever developed, it'll be tough to to develop them. They may have to do two lots at once right. to develop them. Are those kind of like the pre nineteen eighty five old time? Yeah, plans they are. Is the applicant here? Um, would you like to come forward and comment on your application? Good evening, Eric Willardson, Willardson Mon Engineering here uh, tonight, representing the owners of the property. Uh, as we were deferred from last month's meeting, I have indeed uh, contacted not only the Renner Sewer District, but also uh, Lincoln County uh, Rural Water Corp, and they have assured us that there is water service that would be available for these proposed uses. Um, Scott was correct. I did uh, contact uh, Judy Peltier with the Renner Sewer District, and she put me in contact with the engineers uh, that manage the sewer district and also the city of Sioux Falls, who authorizes uh, the use of this of the sewer district in and handles the uh, the wastewater at the Sioux Falls plant um, there is not 42 hookups uh, available right now uh, there are 19 currently that are available uh, based on the new calculations and the city of Sioux Falls would call those uh, ports and a residence can use it is equivalent to one port so there's availability for 19 residential lots in addition to that they allow uh, commercial users to uh, purchase ports depending on the type of development that occurs and if it's a very low impact water user uh, you know it's it's one or two ports it's if it's a very significant water user because what I'm told is it can be up to eight ports that they would need to purchase for that uh, development. So I guess bottom line and it's it's on a first come first serve basis. So right now there's 19 without doing anything further to the system. So that would uh, be able to service a portion of this property, certainly uh, maybe some of the, the property that that you recommended for rezoning if, if the commission follows your lead on that there will be availability for them as well um, Scott also indicated we did talk to South Dakota DOT and they are here tonight I think they can maybe speak to the issue uh, it is a change of use from the farm uh, entrance to what would be a street entrance and I believe we do meet uh, essentially setback and, and site distance uh, requirements that this would were far enough from the intersection to allow it. Uh, I'm assuming this falls within the guidelines of their uh, classification and, and the number of, of uh, access points. I guess I would assume there's quite a few more than 10 in this mile. I don't know exactly how many there are. 
um, maybe Brooke can enlighten us on that as to whether or not this, this is possible from their perspective. Um, I would, I guess, disagree with Scott a little bit in, in that this is somewhat, uh, somehow much different than the development previously or the Renner Corner or uh, what the comprehensive plan says. And I do think that the type of use we're proposing here, uh, and again, residential backed up to the highway uh, is not going to be a, a favorable sell. <clears throat> so I guess we're looking at this commercial use. We think it does fall in with the guidelines of the comprehensive plan. However, uh, flawed it may be, it is what it is. Um, I guess they're very interested in the plan we presented and acquiring the commercial zoning similar to uh, what's, what's happening about a quarter of a mile away at the rental corner. So with, with that, I guess I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. I hope I've assured you that sewer is available, water is available, and I have looked into the engineering to see if, if it, in fact, is engineering feasible to connect this property to the sewer. If you would remain up while I ask, I guess, a procedural question of Sam. So there's really kind of two different requests, an A uh, as to commercial and A to residential. Do we need to do we treat this in one motion or two motions? Uh, you can, it, it's open to either way. Uh, I will tell you um, that the way that the the, the way that the hearing notice is published in the paper, it just gives, it, basically the hearing notice says the, this legal description is going, is proposed to be, has submitted to be rezoned, a portion of it is going, is, has been requested to be rezoned to see commercial, a portion to, to R1. And it's, uh, it, you know, whether, whether you open all of it, if you decided to rezone the whole thing to commercial, I think you would be within your rights because we published a hearing notice saying that that was being considered for <coughs> this property. If you wanted to rezone the whole thing to R1, that could also be covered within that hearing notice. I guess the reason I asked him while the applicant was still standing is if it has to be in a single motion that we're taking both actions as one um, because I think there's a greater concern with the commercial, it would be uh, denied it couldn't be resubmitted for a year then, right? So. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Well, it would still go to the commission. Yeah, it would still go to the commission. Right. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? <clears throat> so while he's up there, excuse me. Yes, go ahead. So while you're up there, my deal is still the same here, sort of. They are available. Okay, so how soon can you lock those up? It's a, my understanding, sir, is it's a first come, first serve basis. Um, that property owner could go down without, my understanding would be, without even rezoning the property, and go down there tomorrow and purchase ports for their property. Whether it's rezoned or not, they're on a first come, first serve. Whoever buys it first, the 19 ports are available now, and after that, my understanding is something needs to be done with the system to uh, allow additional capacity. So indirectly, you're actually dealing with Sioux Falls? Correct. Well, the Renner Sewer District sells the ports. The city of Sioux Falls tells the Renner Sewer District how many ports they can have. Okay. The money goes to the sewer district, my understanding. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else here that would like to speak to this item? Yes, sir, please come forward. What's your name and address? <clears throat> My name is Joe Meyer. I own a property directly north of that. Um, I just want to clarify, I bought that property eight years ago. I talked to uh, the then manager of the sanitary sewer district and I was told at that time that there was a moratorium on building for permits. So 
long story short, I, I waited. <clears throat> I talked to the guy at uh, the city of Sioux Falls, the engineer, and he said there was not going to be a lifting of that until they updated the lift station down near the conservation office. So a couple years ago, I'm going out, go out there, check my property, and there's all kinds of development going on. So I check into it again. Well, now they have 40, this is two years ago, they have 40, approximately 40 hookups. It was my understanding that you cannot go buy the permit until all the other ducks are in their row. You have to have Brooks permission. You have to have your plat finalized. You have to have the zoning. So that's something that you guys need to clarify. As far as you're asking about the motion, um, I think the guy should be able to do what he wants with this property, but uh, he asked for a commercial zoning and a residential zoning. I don't see how you can split those. You have, in my opinion, you have to deny what he wants. That's, that's just my opinion. You know, he wants a commercial and he wants a residential. If you don't give him that, I think you have to deny the permit. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question, please? Yes. Is there eight smaller lots for the land you have then? Well, <clears throat> I thought about buying that piece of property that he owns. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for him to come down in price and he gave me what he wanted. But, uh, I had that all platted out to come in off that street up to the north and basically come in the other direction. Uh, another thing that their plat doesn't show you is that there's a high line that goes across there. So that's not all developable. The, the creek runs through there about where that one circle is. So they're not going to get that many lots out of there, but that, that's they're not re, they're not replatting right now, so that's not important. They're asking for zoning. Uh, anyway, your question: If I, it's my understanding that I can. My best bet would be to shoot the highway and hook up with a manhole up at the top of the hill. I don't know what that street is. My the. The approach that I have is called Northview Avenue. There's, a, there's an offset street right there with the manhole. I would have to shoot to that. I do not have enough fall or I could only develop four lots according to my engineer and it would have to be replatted. Um, I've talked to Mr. Anderson a couple of times. If I was to re do that, I would not be able to, in my opinion, I shouldn't have to rezone that whole thing as residential. Because right through the middle of mine is where that power line goes through. You can't build under it. And, you, and I, the property behind that is low land. It's my understanding that you can't have a R1 residential lot over an acre. So he, he mentioned earlier today about a, an estate lot. I don't know what that means. Something new again. Um, do you have any other questions? I was just curious, since this is adjacent to it, I thought, well, is this going to affect you in the future as far as what you're going to do? So. Well, you know, Mr. Wilson said the last meeting that they would keep that in mind, you know, and size those pipes. They, would, of course, like I said, they're not replatting at this point, so it doesn't show that they're going to have an easement in that direction. But, you know, that's a fight for different dangers. So if they put a big motel down in the corner, we just approved commercial, they may buy eight or nine of those ports and that'd be. Well, there again, you know, I, I, 
I've heard so many stories, I don't know what's right anymore. Yes, I can understand it, that. It's my understanding that you have to have all the plans and, all, and everything, and you're going to go buy those lot, those permits individually. Or you could buy them in advance, but they were only good for five years. And I was told that the city was going to put a big old fee on it, and they were going to be like 500 bucks, or I mean $5,000. Mr. Soren, that was here last, when I talked to him last month, said he paid about 500 for his uh, development to the north of this. So my opinion was I'm not going to get four or five hundred thousand dollars involved in this property and have the city and you guys or whoever say, uh, well, sorry, you're going to have to wait. So I'm, I'm moving on, basically. But I still have a concern about what's going on. Mr. Chairman, can I address this, what Mr. Myers indicated? I just am looking in the R1 zone district. There's no maximum lot size. There's a minimum lot size of uh, 7,500 square feet. And if you read in the intent, it says, the district is intended to provide areas for residential use with a gross density of generally five lots, five dwelling units per acre or less. So if they, basically, it doesn't, preclude you from having a, a two-acre lot in an R1 zoning district. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this item? Yes, sir. Please come forward. I'm Randy Hofer. I live at 47497 Concord Avenue, which is directly across the road from this property. I said, there was three lanes there, a turning lane in the middle would probably be a lot safer deal, but that traffic through there is serious. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be my main Speed concern. is your concern? Is the speed going too fast? or Well, the visibility for that hill okay. is what's bad. I mean, I, I, I'm going to live right on the concrete. I can, pull, I can look really good and get halfway out there, and there's a car right on me coming over that hill from the north. Okay. And I know... Well, many my neighbors been rear-ended turning off of that road to go west. This would be going east to the leaders, but coming across that all that traffic to come south. I don't. But I'm dead against the commercial, but residential, I guess that's up to you guys. Where is it going? Okay. Me, but like I said, the traffic's a serious problem right there. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Randy, uh, do they pick up kids with the school bus there too then? Right on, on 115? Not on 115. To my knowledge, do they? Right. Farther right. south? Street. Right, yeah, they street. Street. right next to us to the south. Yeah. To the south, yeah. okay. The bus stops there. Yeah. And no, they do on Concord farther to the west off yeah. of 115. Off of 115, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, Don't they go down Concord? Thank you. The yeah, Concord. on Concord too. Yeah. The bus doesn't stop on the highway. Not, not right. They used to when they when I had kids going to school. Yeah, you're right. That's been 20 years ago, 25 right. years ago. Ma'am, would you like to come up yeah. and turn? Hi. Uh, my name is Dee Dee Zimmerman. I live at 25778 475th, right south of where they're trying to develop this. And um, I see ac almost accidents every Sunday when I mow off this dirt road. They back off onto the highway, as far as I know, it's against the law to back out onto the highway. Cars coming up over the hill, cars going north, and now the car almost gets T-boned. The car's not, the driver isn't smart enough to get back onto the dirt road, just sits there. And this happened on the 20, 29th of June, right after the meeting was here. So I've seen it drastically it's a bad hill and it's a dirt road that they're going in on it's not a developed road but i see it all the time and right across from randy hofer's place it's terrible because you're coming down from baltic um del rapids they they're just traveling i don't even turn into my driver i go to rent a corner come back up because people are just on your on your back so. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? 
bullets, and did you have uh, additional comments? Thanks. Yes, yeah, just a couple of remarks. Um, as for the sanitary sewer, um, what we would be required to install in the ditch would be an eight-inch pipe. And to my experience as an engineer, um, that eight-inch pipe could be extended to the north and, and serve that property to the north all the way to the top of the hill. I guess the other issue seems to be traffic, and that's I guess why we asked for White to attend tonight and maybe she can shed some light on whether or not there is site distance available where we are proposing uh, the intersection. Hello, Fort Boyd again. Um, first, I want to address there was concerns or issues or misunderstandings of how access can be acquired in the area. And I'll just give you a little bit of background in that um, access management is somewhat new to the state of South Dakota. Back in 1999, uh, a research project was conducted within the state to decide whether access management was something that the state wanted to pursue. By 2001, the legislature approved administrative rules allowing the DOT to conduct access management and establish some rules for that. Um, at that time, all access statewide was essentially grandfathered in until such time as there was redevelopment that occurred, uh, a construction project comes along, all access is reevaluated then at that time. And so anyone with a new property looking for new access has to uh, adhere to the administrative rules established in 2001. And we are currently going through a major overhaul of the administrative rules, so it's likely that a number of the, the requirements that are, are here today will be changing here in the near future. One overriding um, law to the entire administrative rules is that we're required to grant, at, at a minimum, one reasonable and convenient access to all landowners. And with this parcel, uh, if we were to not grant access, it's essentially landlocked. It doesn't have any way to get to it. So by state law, even though it may not meet our spacing requirements, our density requirements, I talked about the five per side per mile, but there's also spacing requirements as well. But we still have to grant access. We can't leave a landowner landlocked. And so this area was evaluated for site distance by Brian Van Dam. I mentioned him before. He's a technician who works with me. And this site, based on the location that they're showing in their uh, rezoning exhibit, does meet the minimum requirements for stopping site distance. We have, we would prefer that it meets decision site distance, which is actually a, a larger number, but we can approve a permit if it meets the minimum criteria for stopping site distance, which this site does meet that criteria. And again, I understand the concerns of traffic and turning, but at this point in time, there has been no development that has come to the DOT showing enough of an impact, again, to require the traffic impact study that potentially would require uh, turn lanes to be installed. Uh, certainly anyone here can, can request that that traffic study be done, speed study, uh, if there are that many concerns about the speed limit in this area and potentially it could be changed. But again, that's something that needs to be requested out of the Mitchell Regional Office for our traffic engineer to conduct. Any questions for Ms. White? Yes. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Um, You're welcome. So we would need a traffic study or a speed study. Are they different studies? No, I, it's it's a speed study. I apologize. Okay. If, if if someone were to contact um, the Mitchell Region Office, they can talk with the tra region traffic engineer. His name is Scott Jansen, and you know discuss the issues that you have, your concerns, <coughs> with accident potential, speed, those kinds of things, and he can put it on his list for areas to study uh, going forward. I mean, he, it's not something he probably can do immediately. You know, it's all based on his. Um, his current workload and those kinds of things. So, and they usually try and do those studies at high peak times, you know, especially if there's certain area. I'll give uh, Highway 17 as an example with Wildwater West. 
to go and do a speed study out there in the middle of the winter isn't going to give you the high impacts that you're going to see during the season when Wild Water West is open. So that section would be best studied during the summer. Um, but this area, I mean, I think you probably could get a, a fairly good representation almost year round. There, I don't think there's really any seasonal um, businesses per se here. I mean, there is egg use, so I, maybe fall would be a, a good time or spring when there's going to be planting or harvesting and you have the additional trucks and farm equipment that would be uh, on this site. But those would be my recommendations. I think it's, it's almost any time of year you could probably study this and get a fairly accurate uh, estimate of what, it, what the 85th percentile is for speed. Mr. Chairman, can I ask Brooke a question? Sure. Is it something that the Planning Commission could ask from DOT uh, or ask the, plan the county board to ask? Is that, I mean, it can come from a government body to do a study too, Absolutely. Right? If you want to just put together, you know, a letter uh, requesting the traffic, or excuse me, speed study be conducted, um, you know, that, that can come from anyone. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I guess being on the Board of Commissioners, uh, I'd like to recommend that this body send that as a recommendation ASAP. And so I'll make a motion to ask the County Board of Commissioners to ask the Department of Transportation to do a uh, speed study uh, on Highway 115.